Hi there. Uh, so I was really looking for that interview with you because uh, basically let me kind of say uh, why it, I find it like extremely special for Russia, for all of us, for our community. The thing is that I myself have a corporate education background right. and I, uh, I myself believe that the basis for, for a stronger community, for a stronger crypto community, for the promotion is definitely uh, enlightening people first. But the thing is that what I remember is that very often uh, when I kind of discuss my career with some mates, you know, like they used to say, well, you know, as they sometimes say in Russian, those who cannot really achieve something start teaching others and I mean I've been mocked myself about it uh, what's your attitude to that why why did you actually uh, decide to go teaching educating rather than practicing I mean it's a fresh market actually there are millions of opportunities there there are there's a lot of opportunities um, I'm actually going to use an American analogy as to why I've chosen this um, solution to stay on the education side of things and that is is that uh, when gold was first found in, in uh, California, a lot of people migrated to California. The people who made money were the people who actually supplied the tools and the trades and the tents and the equipment and not the actual miners. And so the approach that I'm taking is, is that, yes, there's a lot of, of uh, high value projects out there that could be taken advantage of. The area that I think that is going to be the most long lasting will be on the education side. I'm going to supply those people with the capabilities of having the right tools to actually do the mining that they want to do. Uh, so for those opportunities in, in blockchain or cryptocurrencies, they're fine. I'm fine with the, letting them do that simply because mine is going to be more stable, be long, longer lasting, and probably in the end I'll make more money. I mean, I'm told on your side, so basically let's try to kind of... What you said actually sounds... It's not actually about dignity or enlightening, right? It's about making a long-term profit. Well, that's part of it, but uh, what I have found is is that I have a unique skill set, and that is is to run training companies. And so and the Blockchain Academy is one of the training companies that I own. And our commitment to to that market is... is um, is pretty much what we consider our knitting. It's the things that we have the, the most strengths in. So the ability to create courses, to create learning paths, to create the ability for people to learn and expand and understand things in a greater manner, or for developers to develop skills, that's the type of uh, skill set that I personally have. I don't have the skill set to actually go out and try to create a new blockchain or uh, come up with the latest wallet. And, my view is is that, and a lot of speakers have been saying that today, and that is is 99% of all startups are going to fail in the crypto space. So I would rather stay on the part that is going to have the higher level of success. If your point is not about bringing another revolution to the revolutionized on a daily basis market right now, then who's your basically target audience like what's the mainstream in, in blockchain education now is it more about uh, technicians is it more about ideologists uh, is it more about marketologists or well basically who's who's the one craving for it most I, I think blockchain is unique in and of itself in the sense that it's a transformative technology so uh, if you think of that as a revolution, there's the revolutionaries who actually are going to go out and do all the fighting. But to do that, you actually have to have a supply chain, people who will actually supply all the implements and tools that are going to enable that revolution. And really, that's the part that I'm staying focused on. I don't have to be the revolutionary to be a part of the revolution. My objective is, is to say there's a huge need for high-quality developers. There is not enough developers to do the job. So um, we're looking at a situation that over the next probably 10 years, we need to expand the number of available developers by 2,000%. Um, so there's a huge opportunity there, and that's where, like, where I'm focused at. Well, that's kind of apparent. The, the, the market is growing. So what shall those who actually want to enter it, you know, like kind of build their career, not just, you know, stop mining or something, but those who want to actually build their career in the market, you know, in all those projects, probably, probably uh, developing some businesses, what shall they actually start with? I mean, in terms of education, basically, what is the what is the borderline between, you know, like a sort of fiat world specialist and the crypto world specialist? 
Actually, there really isn't a difference. Uh, I mean, the, the thing that we have encountered right now is we've encountered this incredible opportunity to make vast amounts of money very quickly with little or no product. Uh, you, Tezos is a perfect example. They have developed a paper. They have a, a basic uh, minimum viable product, but they were able to raise $250 million. You have Filecoin, who is, who's never even built a proof of concept for their particular product and they raised uh, almost $260 million. That is going to be fine for those, those truly entrepreneurial people, but for the vast majority of people who want to be a part of that, they're actually going to be not hired by these small firms. They're going to be hired by the mainline industries, the manufacturing companies. They're going to be hired by the uh, supply chain groups that will actually manage these things. And where they're going to make a lot of money is, is really in a long-term salary. So those early adopters are going to be the ones who are highly rewarded, simply because there's so few. As an example, currently a blockchain, a high-quality blockchain architect who only has two or three years experience because it didn't exist before then, now they're making uh, up to $450 an hour, which is $900,000 a year. They're going to be making that now for the next 20 years versus the, the, uh, on, the off chance that they can actually go out and say, I've created this new wallet, come, come and invest in me, I'm going to make a lot of money. Uh, most of those are going to, just going to flame out. But those people who say, you know what, I can go into this the main industry, the main co uh, corporate community, and actually I, I can be a, an impact for a lot of what's going on, they're going to have careers where they're highly rewarded for a long time. So my suggestion is, is that if a person wants to get into it, but they don't have that entrepreneurial side of them, they just go in and learn the coding simply because there's so few that everyone's going to be competing for their skill set. Well, actually, concerning coding, my experience says that we do have in Russia, we do have like a big pool of great specialists there, you know, like really talented guys. And they've been, well, they, they, they have been, you know, bringing new products like in uh, regular, like what we call real world IT now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we see a lot of talents uh, in the crypto world. Basically, there are a lot of, you know, like, I know, like there are a lot of college kids uh, looking for some opportunities. What shall they start with? I mean, 10 years ago, they developed JavaScript, they developed C++ and stuff. What shall they focus on now in that case? Well, blockchain technology uses the existing scripting languages that they're already familiar with. Uh, Ethereum uses primarily JavaScript and Python. Uh, yes, they have their own scripting with uh, Solidity. Solidity, yeah. Um, but you, all you need to know is JavaScript uh, or Python uh, for that. Uh, if you need to do something in Hyperledger, you should learn JavaScript and Go. I mean, each of the various platforms have the draw upon already an existing technology. Really, the, the key is going to be is, is how do you then apply that coding skill to the blockchain. And what's going to happen is this. You, you pointed out that there's a high level of quality coders here in, in Russia. Russia has always maintained that quality level. It's been high quality people, high quality product that is delivered. Russia could actually find themselves simply because they have this incredible um, population of high, high quality skills already available, all they need to be done is, is just adapt them to the blockchain and they'll, they'll well, be major players without even trying. Right, and therefore th that basically is what I, was, uh, what I was thinking about asking you, what is basically the way to convert, you know, like there are now many people, well, I mean, we have, I mean, if anyone didn't know, we are still experiencing crisis here, you know. No. Uh, well. It's impossible. Well, we, that was sarcasm. We, we truly enjoy it, you know, like whenever we get out of crisis, we, we immediately find the next one to dive in. So therefore, a lot of people are looking at new careers, at new opportunities in blockchain, just, you know, like to kind of sure. uh, uh, get into the stream. What's the way, for, what's the easiest way for like an average coder to convert, like basically, does he have to enter a new project? Does he have to enter a blockchain academy somewhere? Uh, we, we actually do not have one now. So what shall they do? Well, the easiest thing that a person could do is, is try to self-teach themselves. Um, so it the, is still available? It's still available. And the problem with that is, is it takes longer to do it because no one's curating a proper learning path. So they're stumbling out there and saying, what do I need to learn to actually make this a viable career decision? What will happen is, is there'll be companies like mine, like the Blockchain Academy, that will just sprout up. And people will go to them and they'll, what they'll do is, is they'll accelerate that learning instead of being one year down to say six weeks. 
and then they'll come out of it with a portfolio of code that they're already familiar with, already comfortable with, that they can go to employers and say, this is what we have. I mean, the biggest thing that happens to me at most conferences is recruiters come to me and say, we'll hire anybody, anybody that you know that has blockchain experience. And that doesn't mean that a person who isn't a full stack developer, as an example, can't become a, a blockchain developer. It's just that they're not at this point. But in a very short period of time, a lot of people could become highly qualified, highly skilled in this particular implementation of technology. Well, yeah, but that kind of thing, you know, like the, the, the lack of human resources in the market. Uh, normally, you know, we experience a high quality, a high tech, a new gen market to have like basically the, uh, the top of the line experts everywhere, right. right? The pioneers. Now, what happens if we look at, at the perspective of the next year, you know, like a lot of people switching their career path towards the blockchain technology, and they, they actually see that they are facing a market where there is a great lack of experts. Ain't you afraid that, you know, like there's going to be a lot of low quality human resources entering it simply because of the demand is incredibly higher than the supply? That will always exist. How do we regulate it? I mean, how only... do we keep improving quality? The thing is, is that corporations need to treat their human resources, not as human resources, but as human capital. So they're willing to make an investment, capital investments, either in the purchase of technology, uh, hardware, infrastructure, or whatever the case may be. They actually need to turn around and treat their, their staff, their human resources, as human capital. If they make the investment in those people, what they're going to find is, is then they'll, they'll be able to discern who is a high quality developer versus a low quality. But in the current environment for the, probably the next five, seven, eight years, there will be very difficult. Those low quality producers will still always exist and will always be there and corporations will not be able to actually ascertain. Um, there's been a lot of discussion about certifications. Um, that's still in its infancy. And so the ability to have certifications as a proving ground saying like, I have this level of skill that is a baseline, uh, that hasn't occurred yet. That will probably happen over the next couple of years, having a, a true certification value. And then those who don't have the certification will be able to be looked at as junior programmers or somebody who will just be able to do quality. Well, shows. basically what we now see in regular IT. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, who's going to be actually pushing that drive, you know, the, towards setting up a guideline and criteria for that? Uh, well, I mean, let me explain my question. The thing is that I myself got my higher education uh, in, uh, in CA. But the thing is that most of my colleagues, you know, uh, they got their education in Russia and I can see that there is a big difference. The thing is that the highest quality education in Russia is state based. Right. Uh, and therefore the state actually decides the, the direction of it. Sure. So therefore we are going to be looking at an increased number of people entering it when the state decides that they really need it. While in, in the West it's apparently obvious that the market decides, that the market makes the decision what they need. Do you think it will actually kind of become like another kind of cold war again and like when we start like you know like competing with our best minds and stuff like that or shall it be actually a peaceful entrance to the new market and the new economy? It'll be a little bit of both. There there will be a coming war um, and it, it will be over the talent aspect of it, not the implementation. Implementation is actually going to reduce conflict simply because everyone is going to have to be cooperatively working. You have now manufacturing of say an automobile that draws upon parts that are coming from say 30 different countries. So the adoption of that is, is going to be a leveler in terms of that kind of competition. There'll always be a competition for the best minds simply because they are the best. Um, it's the same in ballet, it's the same in, in any, any aspect or business that you choose. So the ability for that competition will, will be simply governed by actually the market. Uh, while the state is, is governing most of the implementation of, of education here in Russia, it's not really dissimilar, say, in the U.S. Uh, universities are, are very slow responders to what market needs are. Most corporations have to retrain their staff when they first hire them simply because of the deficiencies that the market has been given. So, so it'll be industries, it'll, so, it'll be well, associations, and it'll be groups of education groups that will come together and they'll create these, these baseline certifications. So you think those are going to be separate entities or actually are they going to be like traditional university based? No, no. I think the, tradi the traditional universities They're are going, going to, be too to slow. way too slow. Even in the U.S.? 
even in the US. Where probably you don't know the actual, you know, like comparison rate, it's 800 times faster than here. Right, so it's glacier speed there. So the best example would be is, is the Berkeley at the university, Berkeley. Right, sure. Um, they actually have created a blockchain program. I've read about it, yeah. Okay. Uh, it takes two years to go through that blockchain program. Uh, in six weeks, my course, as an example, as a comparative example, you learn the same skills in six weeks versus two years. Well, because, yeah, I mean, I've read about that program and it's kind of, uh, it's, uh, I mean, no offense, uh, and it's not that I'm comparing it to your six-week program or anything, but it, it, it looked completely amateur. It, as for me, when I was reading through that, I could see that, you know, like they decided just you know, like kind of to Google and pick some stuff from That's there. That's all they did. Yeah. Well, it's really driven by the, the professors. What yeah, is the, the yeah, interest actually, of the professor? And that's it. Yeah, I was reading through that, you know, exactly. like through the outlines of the syllables, and I saw like, you know, like kind of like, they, one morning they pulled a comment and said like, hey, did you see the trends? It's all about blockchain. So you, what are you gonna teach them about? Like you're an IT guy. Well, I'm gonna read about Solidity and probably run, you know, like a couple of courses about it. And Not a couple, they'll run one. Yeah, yeah, I, I read out week out loud, you know, <laughs> and, and that's how they formed it. I mean, and... And you gotta remember, so that is the best response. So a lot of universities there, think that they have a blockchain program when they offer one course. They think one course is a blockchain course. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we are working on building a community here. I mean, and it's it's a lot of work everywhere in the world. The thing is that I started to build, you know, like a, a course outline. Something about, my gosh, five years at least I calculated there. You know, like I tried to anticipate five years, something about 50 courses there. And I understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's a drop in the ocean. And there's going to be apparently more. I realized that within five years, we're going to actually, like, we're going to see that we haven't even covered like 10% of it. No, and the, the technology is actually it's transforming. It's going to span faster, yeah. Absolutely, faster so, than what we're responding so to. So what's the best way, I mean, kind of, I mean, the question for everyone in our audience, I believe, that's basically what they need to hear. What's the way for them to enter, to enter the education sphere, to enter the new trend, you know, uh, from any market? Like, basically, how do they find, like, private corporate, uh, private or corporate, uh, you know, like, uh, educational programs, universities, how do they actually Google? Well, so using Cisco as a perfect example, when you first, when Cisco first created their engineering certificates, uh, there, a lot of universities were looking at it and saying like, okay, we can actually duplicate that. The universities stopped doing that simply because they were never going to be as responsive as Cisco was going to be to their own technology. They created these various levels of certification and that actually then acted as a replacement for any educational degree that anyone got. Microsoft started doing that, the same thing with their databases and everything else that they were doing. So you would get like an exchange certification, you would get a, a SQL certification. Those um, certifications now have replaced that university degree. That is only going to be accelerated now with blockchain, because blockchain is more transformative than any of those things by a, a factor of of a hundred or a thousand. So what's going to happen is, is the universities are going to be very slow responding, whether they're US based or whether they're based here in Russia. The thing that is going to be the most uh, effective is, is for individuals to focus on what is it they need to learn and then finding a way to actually learn that. So kind of there's no designated trend right now? No, we're in its infancy. Uh -huh. So uh, but what about those people who actually are not IT? Like, do you have courses and programs for them? I mean, there's, there's, there's a vast difference between, you know, like ICO and blockchain markets and then traditional marketing. Do you also teach that? We don't treat, teach the marketing side of things, but what we do, uh, and that was originally uh, how we got into the blockchain space, was uh, a client came to us and they said, all of our senior people don't understand this new technology. What can you do to help us understand it? We want to be able to have a dialogue with the developers so that when they're saying things, we're not just razzle-dazzled by, well, the words they're throwing around. We really want to understand what the, its capabilities are. We don't need to necessarily understand how coding works, but we do need to understand what the technology is capable of. So yes, we actually have a set of courses that is it's designed specifically for that. So that's kind of like, well, kind of the blockchain MBA or something like that. Right. It, it would be it just understanding what its capabilities are. So like our original course, we delivered it 18 months ago, the very first one. And it was a, a four-day, full, full uh, day, four-day course. And people walk out with a, a higher knowledge and a higher understanding of exactly what the technology is. Uh, we've expanded that dramatically because uh, what we're, we're doing is responding to the market. Whatever the market is saying they want, 
that's really what we're trying to provide them. So that's basically, that's your target audience right now, right? I mean, corporate clients, those who need to enter the market with their powers to enter the new market. But where shall we start? I mean, do you think that in schools right now, we shall be actually presenting, teaching kids uh, like cryptocurrency, smart contracts? I, I wouldn't, simply because the... the, the, the I mean, don't you think the it's... The emphasis that most people are going to be taking is, is going to be focused on the cryptocurrencies. And the cryptocurrencies is just a single application that's built on the blockchain. Well, but they have computer classes, you know, computer workshops at schools. Why not to teach them blockchain, smart contracts? No, they should. Absolutely, they should. So, I mean, basically, do you think it is already time we started, you know, like bringing it into the minds of the youth? Oh, absolutely. They should be starting in, in high school or, or um, secondary school um, prior to uh, universities. By the time they get to universities, universities should have a full curriculum that they're building out. Uh, whether they do or don't, I, I don't know. I actually have been arguing to a lot of people is, is that if you really want to make an impact with this new technology, is don't go to university. Start to become a coder. Learn at least those basic coding skills and then apply that to blockchain because you'll be able to do something in, in the course of say nine months that would take you maybe six or eight years worth of university to try to even approach. Then the question is, is if I can do it that fast, what am I making? Now instead of paying for university, I'm actually making money and being highly compensated for it. So basically the earlier, the better for everyone. Absolutely. Well, my last question is basically, since we are an international conference here, could you kind of give your overview about well, what, what places on earth are the friendliest, kind of the most advanced, and what are actually kind of the slowish? I mean, where are we on your scale, on your uh, analysis? conferences? No, actually, no, no, not the conference, the educational level, you know, like the kind of, the penetration level into blockchain. Like, for Russia as, as a... And, well, what's the best place to be? Well, the best place to be currently would be either London or New York. Uh, simply because that's where the largest amount of blockchain not development. Not CA, not the Valley. I was just there last week, and and it's not. It's they're really second grade. I mean, they really don't know what they're doing there. They have low implementation. They have low awareness. Um, but that's the same story as you know, like those CPUs in the U.S. versus what is it like ATIMD? You know, like these guys know how to show off with the Valley. These guys know how to bring the value. Right, but just in terms of implementation, where's the highest concentration? Those are the two highest concentrations. You're seeing a lot, a new level of concentration. What about Asia? You're seeing that in China uh, and in South Korea. Japan is 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 uh, falling far behind those two countries. Well, they're kind of accepting it economically more than ideologically. They are, but Japan should be. Yeah, they're a huge manufacturing uh, source. In Europe, you of course, outside of the UK, you're seeing it actually in Germany. Germany is doing, and Switzerland. So Switzerland is doing more on the government side. Uh, Germany is doing more on the manufacturing side. You know, so those kinds of adoptions are, are, are very, very large. So where I would say how these things rank, I think they're fluid right now uh, in terms of where they are. Uh, there's two clear winners. Uh, at the moment, but it's only momentary. It doesn't mean that over the long term that that's where they will be based. I think that they'll, we're going to see most blockchain uh, groups are going to be based where they have a strong level of math, strong level of coding skills, uh, where uh, what they're developing is clean. So using an example, a comparative example, code that's developed in India and code that's developed here in Russia are entirely different. They can still accomplish the same thing, but you want clean code. That's really what you want. So even though there might be, in the end, more developers say in India, as an example, the strengths that exist here are going to allow this area to actually be quite influential. Okay, thanks. So we're not lost for the world, right? No, absolutely not. Okay, great. Thank you for the dialogue. Uh, actually, as I said, I have a lot of personal interest in promoting that idea. That's why we're putting this conference here. We want people to understand that it's not a bubble, it's not about money, it's not about trade as much as the new era that we are about to enter. Right, a disruptive technology. I actually refer to it as um, a tsunami wave. We have an existing uh, community that exists on the beaches and what's happening is this wave is going to come in and it's going to destroy everything and realign everything. And what's going to have to be built is a brand new, new world that's going to be built around blockchain. Thanks. Thanks a lot.